Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone watching at Virtual MLCAT 2021. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. I am Hishan Parry, a fourth year student at the University of Southampton. I just finished my bachelor's degree in electrical and electronic engineering and will also be pursuing a master's at the University of Southampton. The findings for this paper are from my third year project at the university. My co-authors are also PhD students and professors from Southampton. And on behalf of everyone, I am very excited to share our dynamic approach to machine translation on embedded devices. First, a short introduction to the University of Southampton. We have around 25,000 students and we are in the top 100 universities worldwide. The University of Southampton is also one of the founding members of the UK Russell Group of Universities. The School of Electronics and Computer Science is the top three in the UK and also home of the ARM ECS Research Center. This work was done under the umbrella of the International Center for Spatial Computational Learning, which is funded by the UK Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. So now a brief look into what we will be discussing in this presentation. First, we'll have an introduction to transformers and NLP. Then we'll talk about edge AI and the environmental impacts of machine learning. We'll look at the motivation for having a dynamic transformer approach and see how we can use an efficient static transformer backbone to make a new dynamic machine translation method. And we'll also look at some design considerations for our approach, such as decoder layers and transformer design space and retraining. So first we need to talk about transformers. Transformers are a widely used model architecture for natural language processing or NLP, but they can also be adapted to use for other tasks such as image processing, document summarization, DNA sequence analysis, to name a few. Popular transformer variants include GPT-2, which is a large transformer-based model from OpenAI for predictive text, BERT, which is a transformer-based machine learning technique for various NLP tasks from Google, and there's even Roberta, which is improvements made on BERT from Facebook. Most of these transformer architectures have a few drawbacks in common, which are long training times and their computationally intensive nature, which makes it a problem to run them on embedded devices that have limited resources. To understand the motivation for why we want a dynamic transformer, we should first look at the environmental impacts of transformers. With the increasing popularity of edge AI, there's an increased demand to run machine learning models at the edge. This also means that machine learning models like the transformer have to be deployed on diversely configured target hardware platforms. Each of these hardware platforms will have a different optimal model configuration, which usually needs to be trained before deployment. Training large computationally intensive models on large arrays of GPUs or TPUs have a lasting negative impact on the environment. For example, training a single transformer model for NLP task has a carbon footprint greater than the lifetime emissions of five average American cars. So you can imagine how big the carbon footprint would be if you trained a separate transformer for each scenario on a different device. It would be a concerning amount of emissions. So there, are, uh, there is work being done into making transformers more efficient and countering the co uh, computational complexity problem of transformers. This would allow transformers to meet power, resource, or latency requirements. These approaches can be divided into static and dynamic approaches. Static approaches provide an optimal transformer architecture for the target application's performance requirements based on the measurement of fixed hardware resources, as we can see in green on the figure on the right. That basically means that the resources that a transformer model was optimized for may not be accessible at runtime. 
Assuming that the transformer model was designed for a hardware requirement of a fixed frequency at maximum power, we can see that the performance requirements of the application are easily violated on the box in the right, in red. The reduced clock frequencies or number of cores for different power modes, such as low power modes, can cause this to happen. Also, sharing resources with other applications or issues such as thermal throttling could cause these requirements to not be met. Optimization of transformers using static approaches is still expensive when it involves retraining. There are a few static compression methods such as pruning and quantization, but there are also optimizations to the transformer architecture such as the light transformer and hardware aware transformers. More on this later. Dynamic approaches to the transformer such as DynaBert or scalable transformers attempt to change the model size by adjusting the depth, width or feature dimensions at runtime. This allows the model to meet latency requirements when dynamic resource constraints are imposed. Our approach, Dynamic Hat, is a dynamic transformer approach which uses the static transformer backbone of Hat. This is very efficient because it includes hardware latency feedback to reduce search and training costs when optimizing for target hardware. So next, we will talk about our static backbone, which is hardware aware transformers, or HAT for short. HAT provides solutions to the drawbacks of the original transformer, which comes in the form of reduced training times, because there is a large super transformer design space that is only trained once. Up to 10 to the power, power 15 different sub transformer configurations can be sampled from the default HAT design space. These sample subtransformers are then deployed onto target hardware with as little as one fourth of the training time compared to a fully trained subtransformer. The hat also makes efficient use of resources. The evolutionary search finds the optimal subtransformer configuration based on real hardware latency data sets obtained from the target hardware. This efficient static hat approach allows us to have a super net that is only trained once, so which allows us to greatly reduce the environmental impacts of deploying transformers on many different hardware platforms. When deploying sub transformers on target hardware using the hat approach, there are two methods. The first is to use inherited subtransformers, which are sampled directly from the super transformer and used for inference without retraining. The second is to use subtransformers, which have been trained again from scratch for 10,000 steps instead of the full 40,000 steps. So the final step in the hat approach is to train all these the search subtransformers from scratch because this results in a blue score increase of around 1.5%. As you can see on the table in the right, we will have a quick introduction to the blue score. The blue score is a metric popularly used in NLP to evaluate the quality of a machine translation when it's compared to a reference translation from a human. As you can see in the table, the n-grams of the candidate sentence is compared to the reference and a score is calculated, with 100% being a perfect match and zero being a perfect mismatch. However, the blue score does come with its drawbacks. One thing is that, that, that it does not take into account the meanings of sentences because it is language independent. Also, generally, the blue score should only be used at corpus level to be averaged out over a large number of translations to get a good idea of the translation quality. Our dynamic machine translation approach will use inherited subtransformers from the hat backbone. Although lower blue score limits will be imposed, they have the same relative performance order as their counterparts that have been trained from scratch. Using inherited subtransformers allows us to sample subtransformers at runtime for inference. 
without loading a new set of weights and sampling the shared weights from the super transformer. This allows us to have a wide variety of model configurations and only one training cost. So next we'll talk about our approach to a dynamic transformer, which is called dynamic HAP. Essentially, what HAP or hardware aware transformers can do is to find efficient models for dif different hardware platforms. Our approach dynamic hat is a dynamic extension of the static framework, which not just adapts to each platform, but also a different performance targets and dynamically available hardware resources for each platform. We do this using a library of selected sub transformers with each their own trade offs. So now we'll go through the steps to our machine translation process. First, a super transformer for a specific translation task is trained once. The super transformer contains uniformly trained and weight shared sub transformers. The latency data sets are generated on the target hardware in the second step. In the third step, an evolutionary search is used to find the optimal sub transformer configurations based on various latency constraints for the target hardware. The resulting subtransformer configurations from the search are analyzed and we find out which section of the design space contains optimal configurations for our target hardware. In the fourth step, we, the search subtransformers are recorded as operating points so that our transformer model can switch between them at runtime as, as latency constraints change. Lastly, Another step in our process is to reduce the design space of the existing super transformer to only the parts that contain the optimal sub transformer configurations for the target hardware. This leads to performance improvements and we'll discuss more on this in the following slides. So to understand how the dynamic machine translation method works with many sub transformers. First, we have to talk about the super transformer design space and the choices that it has. The super transformer in HAT has the same encoder to decoder structure as the original transformer. The sub layers have elastic dimensions to allow different configurations to be sampled. The super transformer may have the following uh, choices for each parameter or more. It has a fixed number of encoder layers at six. And this is mainly because the encoder accounts for less than 5% of the total measured latency of the transformer. Because unlike the decoder, the encoder can be parallelized and it also performs less computations than the decoder. As we can see, it has one less attention block. The super transformer also has six choices for decoder layers three choices for hidden feed forward network dimensions, three choices for arbitrary encoder and decoder attention, two choices for input embedding dimensions, and two choices for the number of attention heads in each attention layer. The following design space displayed on this slide is a default hat design space and contains up to 10 to the power 15 different sub transformer configurations that can be sampled from it. So now that we know what the design space of the super transformer contains, we can see how different parts of the design space and changes in different parameters affect the performance on our target hardware. And a major parameter that uh, affects latency and performance is the number of decoder layers. A major step in our dynamic hat process is analyzing the configuration of the search sub transformers. So we can see that the best performing sub transformer on the GPU for our NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is our target hardware platform, has four decoder layers. And the best performing sub transformer for the Jetson Nano CPU has five decoder layers. This is in line with research that GPUs prefer wide but shallow models and CPUs prefer deep but thin models, mainly because GPUs are less sensitive to changes in hidden dimensions and feature dimensions compared to CPUs. The final step in the dynamic hat process is to reduce the dimensions of the design space. 
As we can see on the slide, the following design space with the reduced dimensions is constructed using the Jetson Nano GPU as the target hardware platform. This reduced design space has 10 to the power 11 different subtransformer configurations compared to the initial 10 to the power 15. Using this reduced design space in our evolutionary search to find the subtransformers results in a blue score increase of around 1% for suboptimal models from the original design space, as seen on the figure in the right. The idea is that this will help us mitigate the 1.5% decrease in blue score due to using inherited trans subtransformers in our dynamic hat method. However, training a separate a super transformer for every single target hardware device would also reverse the benefits of hat. So the recommended way to do this would be to use one super transformer with a very large design space so that we can identify the optimal section of its design space for our target hardware. We can then perform an evolutionary search on this subsection of the design space to find subtransformer configurations for different latency constraints of the target hardware. We can have different optimal design spaces for families of different hardware, such as NVIDIA GPUs or low power ARM CPUs. As mentioned in the previous slides, the blue score can be a rather harsh metric and it only works best on corpus level. Uh, also the accuracy of language models and evaluating their performance is quite difficult when compared to something like uh, evaluating an image model. This is because many different people speak uh, the same language in many different ways and different speakers have different preferences. However, it does help to look at the sentences produced by our translation model. The table shows real-time English to German translation results using a dynamic switching of subtransformer configurations at runtime. We can see the best performing subtransformer configuration for the Jetson Nano GPU with a latency constraint of 1000 milliseconds compared to the lowest performing subtransformer with a latency constraint of 350 milliseconds. We can see how there are many more um, words and phrases missing in the 350 millisecond subtransformer, as well as how the 1000 millisecond constraint subtransformer has a, a translation much closer to our reference translation. It was a great experience sharing this talk about dynamic transformers and efficient machine translation at the edge. For more information, please feel free to contact me on LinkedIn or by email. Also, please follow more great research work from our team at the University of Southampton. You can check out our work on dynamic DNNs and also our work on runtime resource management. Going forward, we really think that we need to combine dynamic DNNs with runtime resource management for adapting machine learning models to available resources at runtime. Thank you very much.